Ladies and gentlemen, the DA head of policy has resigned from the party and therefore I want to become the DA head of policy. So here are the five top policies I will implement if I become the DA head of policy. And it's important to note that undergirding all of these policies is the following truism about the DA. Conservative people are voting for the DA because conservatives have no one else to vote for. So they would vote for a liberal party only because there's no real huge conservative party out there that will grab their votes. So my argument is a lot of DA support actually come from conservative South Africans of all races. And if that is true, the policies the DA has to adopt need to be conservative in nature. And in line with that, policy number one is taxation. And basically there's no prescription on this, but every tax that can be cut is going to be cut. Whether it means tax rebates for private security, private education, and private healthcare, or it means eliminating all carbon taxes and all that sort of nonsense. In essence, the policy is gonna be every tax that can be cut should be cut. And that will include local rates, that will include capital gains, that will include dividend tax, that will include basically every single tax that we are forced to pay in South Africa and receive nothing in return. Policy number two is law and order. And this one is actually very, very simple. Law and order means that South Africans will have a human right to self-defense through gun ownership. Yes, I want to emulate the Second Amendment from America and put it here in South Africa. The reasons for this are very obvious. The South African police service is nowhere to be found when crime is at hand. The justice system is nowhere to be found when victims are victimized. So at the end of the day, the only way to prevent or stop crime in South Africa is to empower ordinary citizens to defend themselves from criminals. And therefore, it should be a human right in South Africa to own and use a firearm. Guns should be available to private citizens to defend themselves against armed aggressors because in South Africa, nothing else works. Number three, in terms of culture, what sort of South Africa do we want to live in if I was the DA? And I think it is very, very simple. In terms of the cultural laws for this place, I would remove race from every single piece of legislation this country has ever seen. There won't be race on the ballot, there won't be race in surveys, there won't be race on government forms, there won't be race on university admissions, there won't be race on hospital admissions. Race will not exist as a concept anywhere in the state. And of course that means getting rid of BE and the variety of race-based policies that the ANC has instituted in this country. Because here's the thing about conservatism, we don't care about race, we care about values and virtues. So if the state is colorblind but it has a strong moral ethic, that is what counts the most. Number four, international policy. I would remove our ties to the Western world as a given and adopt a South Africa first policy. So what does it actually mean? Well, it means we take on international agreement based on what's in the best interests of South Africa. So if we have to import Russian oil or American wheat or UK whiskey, it actually doesn't matter. We will deal with whoever makes this country better for our needs and our people. We do know that the international law-based law is a lot of nonsense and that the world is becoming a multipolar world. That leaves South Africa in a much stronger position than a unipolar world with America dominating. So therefore we should use this opportunity to do what's best for South Africa and South Africans, even if it means dealing with people that we don't like or people who are undemocratic. Because at the end of the day, for the DA, what should matter the most is what suits and benefits South Africa first and the citizens of South Africa as well. That is the first port of call in terms of this policy and is one that I would implement. And lastly, number five, this is not really a policy, but what I would do is make sure that the DA doesn't implement any rule that the ANC created to keep the DA down. As an example, if the DA wants to take over the ports of Cape Town, they should just go ahead and do it. Don't ask for permission from the national government, just go ahead and do what needs to be done. If the national government is upset about that, let them take the DA to court, who cares? But during that period of time, the DA can take control of key infrastructure for the benefit of the citizens of South Africa. So instead of endlessly asking Becky Taylor to devolve policing or something like that, just create your own police force and do it. You want railways, take over the railways and put trains on them. You want ports to export coal somewhere, take over the ports, fix them up and do it. A fundamental problem in South Africa is asking for permission. That needs to go. What you need to ask for is forgiveness 
after the fact. And just think about it, if the DA takes the paws of the railways or the police service in the Western Cape for themselves and they do a better job, how is the court going to determine that it's actually against the rules? You're benefiting the human rights of the people of South Africa. So at the end of the day, for this policy, there is no reason whatsoever to completely ignore the ANC, never ask for permission and just take action. So I know some of you are going to say, Ramon, what do you know about policy? You've never written a policy in your lifetime. You've never written a piece of legislation. Legislation. All of that is completely and utterly true, which is why perhaps I'm the best place to be the DA head of policy. Because sometimes there is excellence outside of the swamp, and sometimes you just need to make a crazy decision to bring in someone from the outside, knowing full well it can flop, but knowing full well the upsides are extremely good as well. So let me know down in the comments down below, should I be the DA head of policy? And if you're part of the DA, give me a call. Maybe I can go for a job interview. Thanks for watching everyone. See you tomorrow.